Welcome back to Dead Good Book Reviews and to a book review that was meant to go up last week on the channel. I sat down, I planned out my weeks, my videos very carefully up to the end of the year so I wouldn't get overwhelmed and then I got overwhelmed and I put out Animorphs instead. Um, Animorphs is more work than this was. I don't 100% know what was happening. So yeah, slightly further away from the original pub date than I had intended, today I am reviewing Margaret Owen's Little Thieves. Look at that. Look at that spot UV gloss. Oh, she's shiny. Some quick disclaimers before we start. I did actually buy this hardback copy for myself, but I did have an early review copy via NetGalley Digital, free, online, all of that stuff uh, from the publisher. Regardless of where books come from, nobody's paying me to talk about books and all opinions are my own. I'm also gonna keep this as spoiler-free as humanly possible, but if you do want to read this book knowing absolutely nothing, maybe don't watch a review of it. I don't know what to tell you. This is, I would describe it as a YA. I don't know if it's officially being put in that category. Uh, maybe a YA adult crossover. I'm 26 and I enjoyed it. There you go. Am I 26 or am I 27? I can't remember. I am an age and I enjoyed it. This came out, uh, I think, on the 19th of October, I want to say. I hadn't originally planned on doing a review for this when I requested it. I was like, I'm going to write the review for the commercial site. It's all going to be great. Ding. And then I read it and I was like, ah, oh, this is one of those books that really fits into the quintessentially Judith category. I think I'm going to need to do a whole video review. And so here we are. It just has strong Judith energy. Margaret Owen has also written the Merciful Crows duology, which I really must read. It's one of those ones that's been on my radar for a while. And I think the reason I haven't read it yet is at one point it was going to be the next book in a subscription box, so I didn't buy it. But then I cancelled my subscription to that box, so then I never had a copy. And then it just... I haven't got to it yet, but I know it involves teeth, which almost guarantees I'm going to enjoy it because pretty much anything with bones and or teeth, I'm here for it. Margaret Owen has that classic list of long, seemingly unrelated jobs that most authors seem to have, looking at a lot of their bios. But her bio ends that in her free time, she enjoys exploring ill-advised travel destinations and raising money for social justice nonprofits through her illustrations. Go Margaret. I'm gonna give in and read the blurb because I want you to experience the blurb that I experienced. That's just where we are in life. Somebody else got paid to write this. They wrote it much better than I will. Uh, Once upon a time, there was a horrible girl. Vanya Smith knows that no gift is freely given, not even a mother's love. The adopted goddaughter of death and fortune, Vanya has made her own way in the world as a dutiful servant of Princess Giselle. Until a year ago, when her otherworldly mothers demanded payment for their care, and Vanya decided to steal her future back by stealing Giselle's life. With the help of an enchanted string of pearls, Vanya transformed into her former mistress and took her place, leaving the real Giselle a penniless nobody. Now Vanya leads a lonely but lucrative double life as a princess and jewel thief, charming the nobility while emptying their coffers to fund her great escape. Until until one heist away from freedom, Vanya crosses the wrong god and is cursed to turn into jewels stone by stone. With a feral guardian half-god, Giselle's sinister fiancé and an over-eager junior detective on her trail, Vanya has just two weeks to pull off her biggest grift yet. Or she risks losing more than her freedom. She could lose her life. In this delightfully irreverent retelling of the Goose Girl, Margaret Owen crafts an unputdownable tale about stolen lives, thorny truths, and the wicked girls at the heart of both. Ba -ba -da -ba. One of the things that I really love about this book is Vanya as a character. I don't think that should come as a surprise. It's uh, pretty, you know, focused in on the character book. I think it's... I'm being attacked by my own craft supply boxes. I'm pretty sure this was third person. No, nope, it is indeed first person, which is even more unusual for me because normally that is one of my least favourite things is first person narratives, particularly in YA adjacent books. But no, Vanya is a very cool character. What I really like about her is her ability to assess a situation and go with a different plan. And that obviously feeds into her jewel thief abilities, but I think it also plays into parts of the story, including like what you believe to be true and what what is presented to you as truth and trusting your own instincts and trusting uh, other people and knowing your own potential bad viewing of a story. I'm trying not to spoil things, but yeah, that kind of thing I think works really well with Vanya as a character and her ability to reflect and change the plan. And I think that that's just very clever. Was worried she would feel too good at stuff, which sounds bizarre because often also my criticism of YA books is that characters are just like clumsy as a personality trait, but Vanya is good at the stuff that she is good at and has other things that make her less great at some things. I don't, it, it, that sounds really stupid, but it, really is something that I enjoyed and it made the book feel more balanced. My second reason you should read this book is that heists in general are just fun. Uh, there's a reason heist books do really well. I remember picking it up and I, to be fair, I read this quite a long time ago now, but I remember picking it up and the first section of the book is a jewel heist. Like it's the first thing we get is Vanya in disguise as Giselle doing a jewel heist. And I was just reading it like, 
oh, this is everything I wanted. You know, that just that feeling you get when you read a book that you're going, oh, yes, this. Please, more of this. That's what I wanted. And yeah, this book gives you that, which I am always here for. Though, to be fair, if you don't like heists, I don't know why you wouldn't like heists. Are you okay? But th yeah, this is heists. And the book does kind of build on that as we go. Obviously, things change, motivations shift, uh, but there are a lot of plans that need to be enacted throughout the story, which I definitely appreciate. I think another reason it works is that the motivation for the heists is not just, I want a bit more money or I can't, I can't give it up, you know? Sometimes you're going, well, you probably could, you do have enough money now. And it's always like the fatal flaw of, I just need one more, one more hit and I'll be fine and I'll give up my, I don't know, jewel handling gloves, whatever it is. Uh, whereas this, I think it sets out why people are doing the things they're doing really well, which is something I always appreciate. This book has a romance in it. I don't think that will come as a surprise. I think for me, the reason this worked is it is a very sweet romance, which I, I appreciate, but it isn't like saccharinely sweet. It isn't too much. It is, it has some, I don't want to say spice because I think that word probably has too many connotations, but it's not a bland kind of romance. I, I appreciated that. I think the love interest is really nice. I won't mention who it is, but I think you can probably guess from the blurb. I was pleased with how it turned out and I was rooting for it. And that is a nice thing to happen to me in a YA romance or a YA adjacent romance. I really must look up if this is YA or not before we start. Oops, oh well. Another pro is that this is a sort of casually queer world. There are still prejudices in it, but it's not it's not the same as they are here. Uh, and I was really impressed when we had a non-binary character introduced or a character who uses they, them pronouns. Obviously it's not explicitly stated that that's the case, but um, the way that that character was introduced, I found really interesting. And I think that one of the things I really notice in books is how characters who use not he, him or she, her pronouns are introduced in the book and how an author chooses to get that around that, especially in a book in first person narrative where that it still isn't the norm in this world. We haven't encountered many other characters who do that. Um, and I just, I, found, I appreciated it. It was unexpected. I really thought this was going to be a fairly like, all right, this is a world where everyone is pretty straight. Let's go, yay. Um, and actually it turned out to not be that. And I really appreciated it. Um, and it will make me look at Margaret Owen's work more in the future um, because that's how I am. Lastly, I wanted to talk about uh, the, as I say, the quintessential Judith energy of this book where you have this kind of like slight, slight body horror of this turning to jewels thing that's happening, which I found very exciting. This queerness, I appreciated. Uh, and also that she's the goddaughter of death and fortune. And I just, I love that idea. Like the way that this book brings in the supernatural into the natural world, because there isn't overt magic in this world, but Vanya does possess some. I just found that worked really, really well. Um, so if you are a person who has typically aligned with my book recommendations, I think this will probably hit the spot. It's not quite, I don't think it's quite as dark as things like maybe Bonchard Daughter was, um, but it, it scratches some of the same itches that that book scratched for me. Reasons you might not want to pick this up, people this might not fit for, um, I think it is quite YA, whether it is officially or not, it does have a lot of those same tropes and beats and feel to it. Um, I think that if you don't like that, then you might not like this. I think it has some crossover appeal. Uh, it's not quite, you know, a blank of blank and blank. I am but a brunette haired, purple eyed girl who's doing her best. It's slightly different to that, but there are some, still some, some similarities. You, you know yourself better than I do. The only other thing I'd mention is this is meant to be a Goose Girl retelling. I believe that. I completely appreciate that may be the case. I do not know the Goose Girl story super well. I have read retellings of it. I have skimmed over it one time as like in the, not the original, but in like a version of it. I didn't, I didn't get that much from this. So if you're looking for like a straight up Goose Girl retelling, there are probably better ones out there, but I, I'm not the best person to speak on that, I suppose. Um, Asha, if you're watching this, could you comment below how goose girly is this? Asher is my fairy tale expert who I will occasionally bring in to be like, hey, this was weird. And she'll explain to me that actually this is from the original fairy tale. Just, oh, great stuff, Asher. Thank you so much. Oh, I forgot to bring all the books upstairs. Every time, every time I think I need to do these comparisons and I do not bring books upstairs. So thank you, Editing Judith, for putting the covers on screen. You're so kind. I feel like there's been plenty of discourse around, um, heist books and when to compare them. Uh, things like Guild of Wolves, Six of Crows, these YA kind of heist-esque books do exist, others exist as well, I'm sure. There were some aspects of this book that I think really reminded me of Foundry Side, uh, which has similar unlikely band of people joining up to do things 
together, I suppose, that has much more detailed magic system than this does. Yeah, I think there's some there's some definite similarities there. It could be that typical thing of I read them around about the same time, so that's my memory of it, but it's by the by. If you wanted to lean in to the kind of YA trope stuff, some of the most recent YA trope fiction I have been reading is The Prison Healer and The Gilded Cage, and I haven't read the third one yet, but there will be a third one in that series by Lynette Noni, I believe, and uh, they are cliched wonderfulness. Uh, I read the second one, I haven't actually talked about it much on the channel yet because that was around about the time I stopped doing wrap-ups, but the second one held up in a way I wasn't expecting it to, and I think that that's something fun if you if you want to read something just like kind of cliched and fun. Really loosely, uh, and because I will take any opportunity to mention it, this did have a tiny little bit of Bear in the Nightingale to it. Like the teeniest, weeniest bit. Mostly through the relationship with older gods idea, I would say. Not relationship romantic in this sense, but uh, there, are, there, was some, there was some stuff there. It, it was familiar to me, okay? Do I think that you should read this? That is the question. Well, my answer is yes, uh, because I really enjoyed it much more than I was expecting to, to the point where I have actually bought myself a hardback copy of it. And that hasn't happened in a very long time. I am trying to get better about ordering the books that I like so that I own them and can, you know, give them some of my money. But in this case, I genuinely thought, yeah, this is a book I'm going to want to reread. This is probably a book I'm going to want to reread multiple times. I would like my own copy and I would like to be able to lend it to people. Do you have plans to read this? Have you already read it? I suppose that's the nice thing about putting a review out after the fact is more people might have actually read this. Yeah, let me know all of your thoughts down in the comments below and also recommend heist books, please. Please and thank you. If you haven't already, please do subscribe. It makes me feel loved and appreciated. You can also follow me on social media, come see pictures of my dog on Twitter and on Discord where we can have wonderful chats about books as well. Oh, that's all from me and I will see you in the next one. It's got a piece of bloopers now. Slightly later. So yeah, slightly further away from the... This hard book, hard book copy of the book? Everything's fine and I'm a professional. Uh, <sighs>